What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here and I'm back from vacation and we got loud noises and stuff going on, but I've got a video to make about graphics cards today and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm not gonna stop for the noises. So if you guys hear any funky loud or sounds, just deal with it, okay? Corsair is proud to present their new Hydro X line of custom water cooling products. The new XG5 series radiators offer the perfect balance of fin density and airflow to keep your loop cool and quiet. The XG7 water blocks feature full coverage cooling for your GPU while also maintaining an aesthetically pleasing design, while the XC7 and XC9 CPU blocks keep all your modern CPUs nice and cool. To see the complete lineup of HydroX cooling products from Corsair, click the link in the description below. All right, so did you guys listen to my video where I said don't buy anything yet? Well, usually when, when, when someone like myself or Paul or Kyle or Linus or Dimitri or whoever says, you guys should wait, you should listen. Do you know why? Because obviously we get this stuff ahead of time and we know what's coming and I feel bad because I came back from vacation and there were messages in my inbox saying, hey Jay, I saw your video saying I should wait to buy, but I went ahead and bought a 2070 and it's like, you're gonna find out today why you should go return that card because We've got three new SKUs from NVIDIA here, the 2060 Super, 2070 Super, and the 2080 Super, which we don't have our hands on yet. Not to be confused with the TI, because, okay, they're TI models, okay? They just called it a Super, which I think is super stupid, but that's just my opinion, and that doesn't really matter. I mean, you could, you could, you could call it Tampex Edition for all I care. If it performs, it performs, okay? I don't really care. Just call it Super FPS Absorbent, who cares? When it, when it comes to the, to the graphics card lineup, it's interesting because we are on the cusp of AMD's 5700 series um, embargo lift. And so, it, it, so much is happening right now. We didn't know pricing on this when we got the cards. We had the cards in hand before we even knew what they cost, which is interesting. In fact, when I did my last video about these cards coming, nobody knew what the price was yet. So it was kind of like everyone was sort of like, kind of, waiting for, trying to fake out the next guy to see who's gonna go and, well, NVIDIA went and they announced their pricing and, um, well, AMD just sent us an email announcing that they have reduced the price of the 5700 XT and 5700, 50 bucks respectively on each card because the pricing of these cards were finally announced. So that kind of makes, uh, it's actually kind of good news because it means our review would have probably been a little bit skewed and the fact that we waited to do our super review until I got back from vacation was kind of a good thing because now I think we'll have the most price accurate information in our video. Sometimes late's better than never, I guess. And by the time this video goes live, the embargo. Yes, there was an embargo on pricing. You believe that? Okay, whatever. When it comes to our charts, there's a couple things you need to know here. We compared it to the Radeon 64 and the Radeon 7 for a couple of reasons. One, the Vega 56 fell off the bottom of the chart. It didn't even, it didn't even come close to matching the 2060 Super and it barely met the 2060. Um, the only reason the 2060 is even on the charts because we need to see how much of an improvement you're getting with the Super model. Um, the other thing too is the 5700 series, like I said, is still under embargo. So we can't share that information with you until that embargo lifts, which you'll then see complete charts in that video of all these and how they stack up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you the charts. And one thing to keep in mind as you look at these, these are Founders Edition cards. So when it comes to pricing, we're comparing it to Founders Edition pricing from NVIDIA, which as you know, is a little bit of a premium. MSRP cards are hard to find. The AIB partners, or the AIB board partners all believe that their cards are better and superior to the Founders Edition cards. I mean, they won't necessarily come out and say it, but they all believe that they're better. They put more engineering, better coolers, and all that sort of stuff on there. So finding an MSRP card's hard. Usually they're at least the same price of a Founders Edition and oftentimes more if you're looking at like Strix models and like XC Ultras and you know, Galax whatever cards, right? So that's something to keep in mind as you look at these charts. We also have no 4K numbers for the 2070 because we don't have a Founders Edition 2070 card. And when we did that testing, I was kind of on a, no one should use the 2070 for 4K, just 1440p or high FPS 1080. So you're gonna notice that figure is kind of missing from that card. Um, if you think we should start including 4K on all benchmarks, let us know in the comments below and we'll start trying to do that for every single card model. But we kind of ran out of time in, uh, for testing on this to get this information out. Um, I still think if you're running 4K, you should be running like the most expensive card that you can get, which should be 2080 and above, to be honest. But let's go ahead and show you those benchmarks so that you can try and digest all of the craziness happening right now in GPU land.
So it's no surprise that the supermodels are faster than their non-super variants. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. That, that's kind of what it comes down to, but it, let's talk about value here because there might be value in the McLaren to someone who was getting ready to buy like a Chiron, right? So you can say, well, I was gonna spend $3 million on a car, but I got a deal at 500,000, right? So it's all relative. So it's up to you to determine where the value is on this. So the 2060 Super is $50 more than the standard 2060. But for that extra 50 bucks, you're getting a bump in uh, CUDA cores, you're getting a bump in VRAM as well. You're getting eight gigabytes of GDDR6, which is also giving you higher memory bandwidth versus the six gigabytes found in the standard 2060. So that means the 2060 being questionable with modern titles at 1440p that need eight gigabytes of VRAM because various titles could easily, like especially Rise of the Tomb Raider or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you could easily bump into that six gigs, no problem. And when once you hit that, that overhead or that headroom, you start to notice stutters and stuff in your gaming because you ran out of VRAM. So having two extra gigabytes of VRAM and not just a nominal CUDA core increase with a clock increase, you're getting at least something for that 50 bucks. The, the, the true story here today though, is the 2070 Super, completely sliding into the exact same pricing point as the 2070 non-Super. So that means that you're getting 2080 level performance for significantly less than what the 2080 launched at nearly a year ago. It launched at a $799 Founders Edition pricing in August of 2018. Here we are now in July of 2019, and it's got an MSRP of $499. Well, the 2080 is also getting a, a kind of a new model replacement with the Super Edition, and although we haven't tested that to see how it compares to the 2080 Ti, I can tell you the 2080 Ti also got a $200 price reduction at $999 for the Founders card. And remember it was a $999 for the non-Founders MSRP. So it was a $200 premium there to get a Founders. So I don't know if we're gonna see possibly an $800 2080 Ti model. But I can tell you that everything sort of shifted down while the performance sort of shifted up, which tells us that all along, that could have probably been the case with RTX. They could have probably launched it at a much cheaper price point and given you a great level of performance, making a lot less of a, a distaste out there for the RTX adoption rate because everyone felt like it was an expensive premium to, to get DXR level gaming and, and, and the price you had to pay to get good FPS. But now that we've seen an improvement in RTX performance because of maturity in DXR and coding for it and getting everything sort of patched and smoothed out, um, it's not that hard now to get 60 plus FPS. The problem was if you got 60 FPS with a $1,200 graphics card, that's just kind of like that's definitely not going to make anyone happy regardless how pretty the scene looks. So seeing the prices come down is definitely a step in the right direction and seeing the 2080 Super be cheaper than the 2080 was and be closer to a TI model performance is obviously a huge step in the right direction but seeing the 2070 be at the same price point as the 2080 currently actually cheaper because 2080s right now still cost over $800 but seeing a $490 or $499 price point for 2070 Super means you're getting that $800 pricing performance level a year ago for $300 less. So that's all a move in the right direction. Um, whether or not that's worth it to you though, only you can answer that. Like I used that terrible analogy a minute ago of a McLaren versus a Chiron. That is, I mean, those are not, those are two completely non-comparable, you know, fruits right there. And that's kind of the same thing going on here. But the reason why we included Radeon 7 and Vega 64 is as you can see, the Vega 64 is more expensive than the 2060 Super, but it's being beaten by the 2060 Super in many tests. I just wanted to include the Radeon 7 so you could see how the gaming performance stacks up at that price point. Problem was Radeon 7 was a fairly limited card, which means pricing didn't really adjust or come down, which means you're still spending over $600 on a card being beaten by a $499 card, if gaming is what you're shopping for. So there's a lot of ifs when it comes to this. There's lots of skews on Nvidia's side now, because at the time of making this video, you've got an overlap of the 60 and the Super, the 70 and the Super, and then the 80 and the Super, and then the Ti and then 1660 Ti and 1660 and 1650 probably coming in the future, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's now kind of like confusing to look at all of this and go, okay, do I wanna spend $50 more and get 
15 percent ish more performance i don't want to say the 15 get this one or should i just spend 100 that's the problem i think with uh, having a product stack that, that that's this dense but the reason for that is this is competition this is competition and we're seeing nvidia respond by giving you more performance and it, it's kind of funny the 2060 is the one that increased to be honest the 2080 and the 2070, those are the ones that shifted this way, but the 60 kind of went that way. It came up in price slightly, whereas the overall value of the 2080 Super is cheaper than launch pricing, but more performance at a lesser price. So the 2060 kind of went more towards the middle, and I think that's because it had to get away from the 1660 Ti performance, because remember when the 1660 Ti launched, we said it was too close to a 2060 to not justify just buying a 2060 and at least having the RT cores and the Tensor cores. So it's, it's a crazy discussion. Um, but yeah, the 2070 is definitely the one that I think shows, well, at least the better performance per dollar because it's the same price with the performance levels of nearly a 2080 non-TI. So anyway, we can't complete this, this review technically. You can see how they stack up versus the current models that are available here because we, like I said, are just days away from another product launch with more graphics cards and we still don't have the 2080 Super in our hands. So this is sort of an incomplete video. But this is where you guys chime in. I, I'm curious in the way the blob thinks. And I'm referring to this as a blob because individual opinions are all considered outliers. And think of it as a big giant Venn diagram with a million different circles and where they all overlap, that's kind of where we wanna focus on our reviews and the way that we kind of handle this moving forward. So what I'd like you guys to do is explain which card on both sides in this lineup you would buy and why. I'm also curious as to what other titles you think we should start testing with because a lot more modern titles have come out since we started with this suite about two years ago with the, cert, the current lineup that we have. And I want to include more modern titles to give you guys a bigger picture of how these cards actually perform. So this is where you guys sound off in the comments below on how you feel about the Super Edition cards, which, I mean, yeah, there's, they got some shine on there and, and they say Super, which I guess is kind of super cool, but I'm just waiting for the 2070 Super Ti, if I don't know the truth. You know it's out there, it's coming, right? The, the Super Ti Gen Sun Edition. It's got, it has a little leather jacket. Where's a little leather jacket on there? Sound off in the comments below, and I'm really curious as to how you guys feel about this. It's the first time we've seen, seen NVIDIA come and kind of revamp an entire lineup, which is sort of depressing, because that means we're probably not gonna see a next generation of RTX-based cards anytime soon, because they just gave us that nominal little evolutionary jump in performance on the same edition, which hopefully means that we're gonna see good things in terms of a performance increase in DXR with next gen performance or, or hardware, which is probably not coming anytime in 2019. So anyway, that's all I gotta say about that, guys. We've got a lot of hardware reviews coming up on this channel. This is, this is hardware review season and I'm loving it. We've got CPUs, we've got more GPUs to talk about. We've got I'm not even gonna give it away. I've got some things planned that I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do it. I'm probably gonna suck at it, which is what's gonna make it entertaining. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.